everyone. If you're new here, which you probably are because this is probably one of my first videos, my name is Mimi. I'm a senior UX designer and I've been designing for over a couple years now. And before this, I had a completely different nine to five job and I quit that to pursue my career in UX design. Before that, I had zero experience. And today I'm gonna go over how I was able to get that experience, the pros and cons of the bootcamp that I actually used, and any tips and tricks that I learned along the way that I think will help anyone who's going through any UX bootcamp. First, I'm gonna run through all the things that I liked about Design Labs UX Academy. The first one is definitely gonna be cost. So the cost for UX Academy is $6,749. I'll put it up somewhere around here, still figuring that out. Um, and I think for a program that's so rigorous and intensive as design lab i think it's a good deal like i'm not saying oh my god that's so cheap because like no one has six thousand dollars just lying around but it's an investment for your career it is a way for you to learn skills that you've never learned before and there's really great mentors and a super awesome community and i think it's really worth it if you look at different boot camps right now and how they compare you see the ranges from like the same price all the way to like $15,000 and that in my opinion is way too expensive. Like that's the price of my car. So I would just say for being what it is, I think it's a really good price point and it definitely makes it a huge pro in my book. So the second pro on my list for Design Labs UX Academy is their job guarantee policy. Now they're not guaranteeing that you're gonna get a job no matter what if you go with UX Academy, but they have a really great safety net if you're kind of on the fence about going with a bootcamp that you're still a little bit unsure of. So what Design Lab does is they promise a refund of the course fee to those not securing an entry-level position in the industry within six months of completing the program. So at least for myself, when I was looking at all these boot camps, the first question that crossed my mind was, am I actually going to be able to get a job from one of these boot camps? Like some of them, I just was like, is this a scam? I'm so sus. This is sketchy. Is this really going to work? So having that in your back pocket is a really nice confidence boost and it really makes you feel a little bit more assured when you're going into Design Labs UX Academy program. So moving on to my third pro for UX Academy and that would be the Design Crits aka Design Critiques. Now you'll have to go to these on a weekly basis and essentially you're getting on a call with other students who are in Design Lab with you and you're showing and telling any and all types of designs. Now when I say this, this could be anything from user research, from sketches to even high fidelity prototypes. And basically you're getting feedback from designers and then the vice versa happens, you're giving feedback to designers. Now why I think this is so valuable is because this actually happens in the real world. Yes, my schedule on a weekly basis, I have two design crits with all of my UX designers. And honestly, if it weren't for UX Academy, I wouldn't have really understood the cadence and the flow of it, how to give really good feedback without hurting anyone's feelings or receiving feedback without taking it too personally and really just overcoming those public speaking skills. So I just really love this aspect of UX Academy and it's a really great way to learn how to communicate your designs in a really clear way and make sure that you have reasoning for everything and it's just a great public speaking boost too like I am an introvert I cannot stand talking in front of people but I'm just so much better at it because of these so if you're someone who's really shy it's gonna be a little bit challenging at first and I was there too sweaty palms and all that jazz but you very much get used to it it comes as second nature and big tip here please find Robin A. That is the first letter of her last name. I don't know her last name, but she is a group crit facilitator and that's someone who's employed by Design Lab that is in these critiques with you, facilitating the conversation. So highly recommend finding Robin once you get there. Right, so now that we've gone through the things that I like about Design Labs UX Academy, let's go over some things that I wasn't a huge fan of. So the first one is mentor matching. Now I wish Design Lab was a little bit more visible and transparent on how they match us with our mentors because I'm not gonna lie, this is something I was like really freaked out about because this is someone that you're spending an hour each week with for like an eight to 10 month span 
and you want to make sure that you kind of jive together like they're the ones who are approving your assignments giving you feedback essentially teaching you so you really want someone that's going to match you and your coaching style and help you succeed before i went in i just told myself like think of all the managers that you've had in the past and think about the ones that worked well for you think about the ones that you didn't really connect with and just try and keep that in mind when you get on your first one-on-one -on -one with your mentor. Personal experience, that's exactly what I did. I got on my first call with my first mentor and I just wasn't feeling it. Like I had this gut feeling that like something wasn't clicking, but that's super important to know because if you get a mentor who is really critical, super nitpicky, really, really hands-on, but it's too much for you, you might get frustrated. But on the flip side, if you find someone that doesn't really seem to care that much and they're nonchalant and they just kind of are going through the motions with you, you might feel like there's not enough value in it. So honestly, like it is up to you to figure out what kind of coaching style works best for you to succeed. The second thing that I wish Design Lab did a little bit better on is real world prep. When you're in Design Lab, you're in this like little bubble and you're just with a bunch of other designers who are doing the same thing as you, who have just as little as experience as you and you're just going through those assignments on a day-to-day -day basis, but once you go out into the job market and you actually land your first UX design job, you're gonna be a little confused at first, especially if you have no background in tech whatsoever. I met a few people in Design Lab who were teachers, they worked in retail, they were chefs. They did not have exposure to product managers, to developers, to marketing managers, copywriters. That's super important because that helps you figure out while you're in Design Lab, what is a UX designer's day-to-day -day actually gonna look like? What are your responsibilities? Who are you gonna work with? Because seriously, like I can't tell you enough, UX designers, one of the biggest things about what they do every day is they work with people. And not only that, you work with all different types of people with completely different goals. So you really wanna figure out like, what is the relationship like between a UX designer and their product manager? Maybe even their scrum master. What are scrum masters? Those are things that you don't really learn in UX Academy, at least for the time that I was there a few years ago. And I think it would be really awesome if Design Lab brought in those real people and just had Q and A's or talked about what they look for in a UX designer. And that would give you a serious leg up in your interview process because you have no idea if you're gonna be interviewed by a panel of devs. If you're not getting that in your bootcamp, I highly recommend that you start looking at those things elsewhere, whether that's Medium articles or just straight up Googling who else works with UX designers or even better, personal experiences. Ask your group chat of friends, do any of you guys work with product or UX designers? You may be surprised some of them might work with them and then you can pick their brain about what it's like working with them. All right, so now that I've gone over the pros and the cons of UX Academy, I wanna go through some things that I wish I did while I was going through my UX Academy bootcamp. And to be completely honest with you, this could be for any UX bootcamp. So the first one is the one that I just saw the most happen at UX Academy and that was just, oh, it was hard to see. But the first tip is, do not let your portfolio get in your way. Oh my gosh, the amount of times I've seen like people just take so long on their portfolio like kills me inside because your portfolio is basically your digital resume. If you don't have that together, you can't go out into the job market and start applying for jobs because that's on your resume, that's what your hiring managers are looking at, that's what recruiters are looking at and I totally get it. I fell victim to this as well because you're branding yourself. You're putting yourself out there. And unless you've owned a business, like when in your life have you ever ever had to be like, okay, I'm gonna make my logo and my font and my color palette and like the tone and voice of who I am. Like that's just not an easy process. And yeah, it's gonna take some time. But what I'm mainly focusing on is really those visuals that students really get hung up on and like the nitty gritty. I saw so many back and forths of like, should I use Wix, Squarespace or WordPress? Like, do you like pink or do you like blue? I just, it doesn't matter. Like it does not matter. At the end of the day, hiring recruiters and managers don't really care about the visuals that much unless you're applying to be a graphic or visual designer. But when you're applying to be a UX designer, a product designer, 
all that really matters is the content of your case studies. What problem are you solving and how are you solving it? What methods did you use and why? What did you learn and what are the next steps? Like, there you go. I basically just laid out your case study for you. And by the way, I'm more than happy to do a video on how to lay out a case study and what that flow looks like. But what I'm trying to say is that's the most important part about your portfolio. So once you get to that phase in UX Academy and in your group crits, you start to see other students showcase their portfolios with like spinny widgets and high quality headshot and like, and like these like these crazy, like crazy wavy, wavy fonts, fonts that are, that are moving, moving and, stuff. and stuff. No, like, don't let that get to you because that's not what's important. Of course, that's awesome. And of course, that's great. They have a developer friend or they learned a code and they did that like good on you. But that's something you could do later on in your career. When you're first starting out, it's just about making sure that you communicate that story effectively on how you solve that complex problem. So just remember, don't get in your way on this. Please, I beg you because I saw it so much and I still see it today when students reach out and they're like, how does my portfolio look? Did you look at this font? Did you like, it's not about that. So just make sure that you get that content out and that quality is really good and you should be set. My second tip is something that I personally went through and it's one of my favorites and that is to write down your case study process. Now, when I was going through UX Academy and we finally got to that portfolio phase, you start putting on your three case studies on there, right? Yeah, but what happens when you worked on those two to four months ago. You don't remember anything. I was relying really heavily on Design Lab's dashboard to extract all that information. Oh my gosh, and it took me forever. And that just goes to my previous tip. Don't try and delay that portfolio any longer than it needs to be because then you're just delaying yourself from getting out into the job market and getting a UX design job, which is seriously the ultimate goal. So just make sure to write everything down. Once that case study phase comes in, get your notebook out, pretend like it's your diary, start writing down what you're you know, researching, why you're researching it, even emotions, were you surprised? Why did you end up doing it this way? And did you think it was a good way? Like, what would you do next time? Honestly, anything and everything. That way, by the time you get to your portfolio section, you'll have that notebook ready and you'll just be going and going and just typing that all into your case study and you'll have a leg up from all these other students just like me who completely did not plan for the future. So my final tip is do not stop learning. This is so big because I heard this from so many other UX designers who graduated boot camps. They all told me this. They basically said, you really only get what you put into it, which is so much easier said than done, but it is true. Like don't go through your boot camp just going through the basic assignments and going through the motions. Look outside of the boot camp, whether that's you know, looking at books, podcasts, meetups, hackathons, do design challenges, redesign a website that you hate. UX design right now is just on such a big spectrum. There's so many different nooks and crannies out there that you could explore and you can also find which types of things you love best, whether that's microcopy or research or strategy, and you might be able to find your niche and your style that way too. So never stop learning, always be active and engaged too. I know that Design Lab has a really great Slack community and I highly recommend you continue to learn and always look at resources that are being posted in there and give people feedback. So the final question, was it all worth it, Mimi? Was it worth the blood, sweat, and tears for eight to 10 months? A thousand percent. I mean, I am now doing a job that I love so much and I love UX designing and yes, it was challenging and yes, there were hard times, but I a thousand percent recommend UX Academy. I think they do a great job. There's really experienced mentors there. They even have a career services that I think is really helpful and I got really lucky. I fortunately never had to flex that job guarantee policy because I got a job two months out of completion because they just really set you up with the perfect resources and the tools and the community. So I highly recommend it. And if you're interested in enrolling in UX Academy, feel free to check out my link below. If you would decide to enroll through that link, that will really help support my new little sapling of a channel. So there you have it, my honest review of Design Labs UX Academy. I hope this video was helpful for you, especially if you're considering taking Design Labs UX Academy 
or who knows, you might be enrolled and you're starting soon. And if you're interested in videos similar to this one, feel free to find that little red button down there that says subscribe and hit it because I will be posting videos like this in the future. Again, thanks so much for watching. I can't believe it's one of my first YouTube videos and I will see you next time. Bye.